Perfect Defence. Hello everybody. Welcome to the World Cup first round match between TIS123 and SAM T2806. Um, so let's call them SAM T and TIS. TIS, um, actually, no, actually, SAM T won the toss and chose to kick with high elves. Um, he has a 61% win rate in Champs Ladder and qualified from the Blood and Tears League, the one qualified from that on PS4. Um, Tiss does not play in Champs Ladder and was one of the two BB Tactics um, qualifiers. So let's start with Tiss. He's, he's, you know, he's been put in, put into bat as it were. Um, Sam T choosing a kick. And Tiss has gone Amazons. Amazons are a tournament staple. Um, however, this I don't think this is a very good format for them at all. Um, they're normally taken when you only have a thousand TV to choose your team, or when you're out a star player. In which case, they can have Roxana not D Roxana Darknail as the star player. Um, when they've got one thousand one hundred and don't have stars, they just look a bit wasteful because they get thirteen players, Apple, and a reroll. Now they could quite happily drop a player and a reroll, or an apple and a reroll, and get uh, you know get a very competitive thousand TV team. So when they're at one thousand one hundred, when they're at one thousand one hundred, where Wood Elves get everything they want, they don't look so good. They are also a tier one team in this, which means they only get four skills, which is two dodge, a mighty blow, and a wrestle. Um, now this is funny because I like this selection for game one. However, the problem with it is, if they are to win in game two, they just basically have to take guard on a, on a on a line woman. So maybe the bet the best start would have maybe been either take block rather than wrestle. But I like the wrestle because it almost gives you tackle a little bit, or swap the mighty blow for a block line uh, line woman so that you can take guard after game one. So. I would say that's the only thing about this team is maybe they don't this team build it's a good team build for game one but maybe it misses out on as good a game as good a team game two. Um, Sam T's choice of high elves always perplexes me when people choose a team that isn't wood elves or dark elves you know yes they're tier two and yes he has utilized it by having a mighty blow tackler which is great against um, Amazon so this is kind of a good matchup for him. But still, Amazons are still better than I was I think. Oh wow, huge one in one in eighty one chance. But he's got the ball protected, so he's done better than a lot of people here uh, in this tournament. He's got the ball protected, so that when he fails the dice rolls, it's not it's not an automatic loss. So that's good. That's good for him. Um, so yeah, you know he's, he's got the mighty blow tackle, which to be fair, dark elves or high elves, uh, dark elves or wood elves couldn't get. He's got three dodge, which I like. I like going dodge as your skill choices. And he's got leader. But I don't think he needs it. Um, it was a, it was perfect defense. So he's gone three rerolls plus an extra one. I think just another dodge. I would have preferred just another dodge there. Four dodge mighty blow tackle seems all right. Um, but yeah, just... Somewhat uninspiring because all you're getting here is two blodge players and two dodge players. Whereas if you're dark elves, <laughs> you'd start with four blodge and a dodge, which is which is nuts, isn't it? Incomparable. Why wow, is having some bad dice here? Is Tiss? He is hitting with mighty blow. I'm like the mighty blow is good game one. Don't get me wrong. It's made it's made a non AV break into a Kaz, and not apple. Um, which is interesting because I think I'd be inclined with 11 man elves to use the app on just the first the first cars and um, to badly hurt because because the linemen are so good you know with humans you'd probably want to save that because you've got a reserve and because you really want to save it for a blitter or a catcher or something but a high elf lineman is still really good so I think maybe maybe I would have appled that, but of course, that's my choice. Watching a game that I'm not invested in, so it's a little bit different. You know, there's, there's a lot of times I think that I would say, 
oh, may, you know, maybe you should do this. And it's one thing to say maybe you should do this, but it's another thing to actually have to roll the dice in a World Cup match, isn't it? So it's very easy to be too critical of people, I think, in this. I didn't really like hanging his guard out to dry here. Um, but, you know, the... It's, it's inevitable, isn't it, that some some hits are going to get made. Also, you could say maybe you should be going for seventy five percent knockdowns. Um, sorry for that. I couldn't. I couldn't control people ringing the doorbell. Um, I cannot go and answer it though. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, he gets this hit, and this is the thing. You know, if this was a real team, you could you could block there and maybe hope to get a pow, but. You know against Amazons, you ain't rolling any pals. <laughs> the only pals you're getting are from your mighty well tackler here. And maybe block guys against non-block guys. Um, this is disturbing, isn't it? I may have to have a look at this. Right. Okay, it wasn't for me. False alarm. <laughs> um, so, yeah. You know, he's, they're, they're both blitzing with the Mighty Blow guys. One's been better than the other. I mean, Mighty Blow is very dicey, isn't it? Um, it's a very dicey skill. Sometimes it's great, sometimes it does nothing. Um, it, it's a tough call. I mean, it would be a really tough call to, to drop it just for a block. A block player. Um, I, think, I think having the Mighty Blow is probably better than having a block guy or girl in your first game. But yeah, this, this is when, when when I thought about it, I thought this was a real problem of this build, not with you know not allocating the doubles, and it's it's the same kind of problem with the high elves because sure they've got this dodge blodge guy who'll get guard after game one, but if they go deep in the tournament, what do they do with their other double, like a guard catcher who only has dodge guard? It's a bit rubbish, isn't it? A dodge lineman who only has dodge guard, that's also a bit rubbish. Maybe, I mean, I think they should, definitely should have taken dodge on the thrower rather than leader. Um, so yeah, that, that's, a, that's a problem. It's a problem with uh, humans as well, really. It's a problem that humans have. They look great for round one. But then after that, you're like, well, where are your doubles going? Nowhere? Or like, you know, guard catches that are unprotected. So... Yeah, I think particularly thinking more about it, you know, I should have really thought more before the tournament started. But thinking more after it started, I think teams like, you know, Undead, they're only 50 TV down against human teams. You play those kind of odds all the time in Champs Ladder. You're still happy that you're an Undead team and they're, they're a human team. So maybe I, uh, maybe I underestimated... Um, Undead, and obviously the field did as well. On, only four undead teams, and uh, and only three dark elf teams. They're both really good choices, I mean, particularly the dark elves. I mean, I think I think undead quite rough game one with only four, with only four skills. But dark elves are fine with four skills. So I think dark elves were really underestimated in the format. Um, but well, by, by by the field. And, but as as we're undead, I, you know, I think there should have been a lot more, a lot more undead, and a lot more dark elves as well, because just because they get to use the re the well, undead close the gap on the better teams really quickly. You know, arguably they're not even that far behind in the first place, and they don't really get good value of their doubles. I don't think. Oh wow, a double one into a Kaz. That's unlucky, isn't it? Well, he was right to save his apple <laughs> because it saves a dodge catcher. Um, not really getting in the way enough, I don't think, but he's movement six without dodge, so it's harder for him to get in the way than, than maybe other teams, such as Dark Elves, but... And he can't really go for the sack the same way Dark Elves can. And now his tackle is going to get knocked over, probably. Um... You know, solid, solid drive from Tiss, uh, but you've got to feel that maybe Sam T should have tried harder to make something happen than what he has done. Um, 
yeah, so I think I think Dark Elves get great value from their doubles and great value great value from skill stacking and having an apple available. And yeah, I think maybe I think maybe there were there were a lot of wood elves and humans, and I think they are the clear best choices for game one. But I think people should have built maybe built their teams with game two in the mind because the thing is if you got in game one, obviously you can't win the whole thing. So that's the thing, isn't it? It's the balance, you know. Nobody wants to go around. Nobody wants to go out in game one. Pretty much everybody wants to win two to get in the money. So you know, obviously people are trying building ones that f teams that are favoured in game one and game two, but particularly game one because it doesn't matter how good your team gets. Even if Amazon's became the best team by a mile in game six. Is it worth having kind of a bad team for the first game or two? And and that's the thing. Maybe these people went a bit too far, having so many humans. And uh, you know, particularly with the invitational, because the invitational happened, and the invitational there was no skills after each game. So in that format, humans are unbelievable because they get everything they want to start with. But. Yeah, I'm not sure about either race choice. I know I've harped on about it a lot this game, and more more than calling the game maybe. But you know, I I, I don't really like what Santi's done here. He's he's this is just giving him the score, and it's not really a great idea, is it? You know, um, he's going to get mighty blow blitzed anyway, so why not try to do something? Um, yeah, I think he should, yeah, I think he could definitely have done more to try and stop the score, but you know, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, maybe the occasion's got to him. He's got he's had nerves or stress, whatever. But it doesn't feel like it feels like he should have done more, could and should have done more to stop the score. But is what it is. You know, fair fair play to Tiss. He's he's done the job, hasn't he? He's, He's ground down the field pretty easily, to be honest, to score on turn eight. And it's, I mean, it's hard if you don't knock them down, obviously. <laughs> There you go. Nine dice doesn't knock him over, or her over. I always, I always call Amazon's men. I just, I just get so used to talking about men in blood bowl that I always say lineman. I, I did try. I think I did say line woman uh, today, but yeah, I usually say line man and stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it is tough if you don't knock them over. So like, I'm, I'm not slating him, but I feel like he probably could have tried to get more pressure on on another day so he has a one chance one turn chance um, not much of a chance admittedly in the rain um, with only movement 8 but there's some chance of a one turn And this isn't this isn't great because I, I like it one behind so you can't get the assist there um, you can't he's, he's given him the, the basically the perfect thing that you want which is an offset <laughs> packed LOS so you can blitz from here and push and then get the catcher once before forward there then push him forward to here four plus dodge no no five plus dodge into there but you know he could get he could get the one turn and he hasn't he hasn't set up for it. He has set up for a ride. Um 
you know, which to be fair, it's better. Oh no, maybe he has set up. I think it's poor set up though. I, I hate using the whole method, especially when you need three pushes forward. Um, because he's getting in one forward, then two, then three. It's just not. It's just not great, is it? He's, need, he's needing the extra push. Like he could have, he could have done it. <laughs> um, but first of all, he should have already passed it to him. And second of all, he kind of needed. Um, he needed a lot. He needed an extra push. And, and the hardest part of the one turn really is, is rolling the pushes on the, on the block dice. I thought he was playing for right there, but yeah, okay, there was there was the whole method. I just, I just, I just really hate the whole method. I would rather just. I mean, if you're going to do that, I'd rather just do it in the middle as well, um, rather than over the one side. That's what made it look like a, a riot. But then you'd do it the other side where there's no defenders. So yeah, okay, okay. I did think he was going for the right, but he wasn't. He was going for the one turner. He was using the whole method. Which I don't like, but if he prefers it, fair enough. Um, you know, I think my way would have needed, possibly needed a dodge, and or a block. So you know, it, it may well have been better to use the use the whole method, but I don't think so. <laughs> I really don't think it would have been better, but you know, maybe it was. And so what if it wasn't? He's got to think of it in three turns, in three minutes, in a three-minute turn, and he's under pressure. And nervous and everything, so you know it's. At least he tried, <laughs> um, it, and it may well have been. It may well have been optimal, and who cares if it wasn't? You know, probably should have done these moves to defend the ball before making the blitz, shouldn't he? Also, he's blitz somebody who could have been blocking anyway, which I can see why he did it. Of course, he wanted to get him protected so he doesn't get tagged. Or doesn't get blitzed back by mighty blow, but so he got the reliable hit in and kept him safe. But I don't know. I think I would have probably put him on the line. And that now see now this block here that he's re-rolled. Did he have to re-roll it? No, he had the ball safe. Um, maybe he could have just done. Like, it's it, what's hard, you know, he probably should have been blocking with his blitzer, shouldn't he? He didn't pick up the ball with the blitzer, so he should have been blocking with him. So, that's straight away, that's a... That was pretty bad, not not blocking with the blitzer. Um, the, problem, the problem with Amazons is, if you maximise blocks, you're more likely to roll the one in nine blocks that, that sap your rerolls. On the other hand, if you don't like block diagonally to maximise blocks, then you get less hits on them, and they're armor seven, and they've got dodge. They're really hard to knock over. So, you know, it's interesting, but I I think I would have put both blockers on the LOS and try to you know maximise my chances of knocking them down, and then maybe do a blitz after I'd secured the ball. But again. That's just like my opinion, man. <laughs> it's not. It's not really. Oh my god! Who is this asshole ringing the bell? <laughs> I do apologise for this. Um, I can't. I can't stop it. So he's doing kind of the elf stall thing, isn't he? Um, again, I'm not actually I'm not actually a fan of the elf stall. A lot of people do it, and people do it at high TVs where they've got an edge five, strong arm, whatever you know, throwing character. It it can work, but I just don't like rolling more dice. You know, especially as it's raining in this game. So if your plan is to is to pass it at some point or hand off at some point, that's a one in nine, isn't it? Even to a catcher. And 
it's just a risk that you could just play you could play kind of more properly if you like more standard running caging team and you just, then that's one that's a one in nine that you don't have to make i mean so yeah i don't i don't really like it um but you know lots of people do very well using it so this is again one of the things where i'm not saying they're wrong mighty blow tackle doing work there the removal um it's not wrong it's just i don't like it <laughs> it's fair which is fair isn't it i can i'm allowed to not like things <laughs> i'm absolutely not saying they're categorically wrong i feel like i shouldn't have to say this every single time i think it should be obvious that things are my opinions and i'm not you know, I'm not saying things are absolutely, definitively one way or the other. But you'd be surprised how many people on Reddit and stuff like that get their panties in a bunch when you when you state your opinion. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, well, I mean, that, that was okay, he made it. Um, he failed the initial roll because of the rain. And it wasn't such a bad thing to fail if he failed it. So it, it, this was an okay one. He moved it up to a more... You know, safer spot. Moved it quite safely, but it can get out of control. I feel like if you're not elf stalling, you can stay in control of the drive. Although it's harder to stay in control of the drive, you're less likely to completely lose control of the drive. Whereas I think with an elf stall, you can end up completely losing the drives more easily. Um, so yeah, I just feel more in control by not elf stalling. He, he did. He blitzed the furthest forward guy, but didn't get in the way. Um, I'd maybe like to have seen him get in the way here. I guess he thinks he's got so much. You know how much is this? Seven players versus four. That even if he does go down, this he's he's got him covered. But elves are agility four, so I would have liked to have maybe got somebody in the way there after blitzing this this player. I think if you this this kind of move is maybe better if you blitz this guy or this guy. But it's certainly not bad, but his, his team is split in half, isn't it? Quite quite heavily. But he's running forward, he's got a bit of a screen. Not going to risk the GFI, he's, he's happy to give it the one dice on the ball. I mean, some dice, isn't it? Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. GFI, GFI. So really hard. That is the main problem with Amazons, isn't it? How slow they are. So it would have been pretty hard. Now it's pretty impossible. So so yeah, pretty good turn from the high levels there. Pretty safe. I guess there is a four plus three plus to wrestle the ball, but no recovery after. So yeah, the mighty ball comes in here. This is. Pretty obvious, gets a kind of lucky pow, 55%. Um, not not slamming in. Slamming in is usually what, what Zons do, because you know, the, the fact that they've got dodge on everybody, it's not easy to knock them over. <laughs> so the herb dirt base 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 is usually a good idea from Amazons, you know particularly base the guys who don't have block or dodge and then even you know that first of all he wouldn't be giving two dice blocks but even if he was giving two dice blocks you're almost as likely to turn over as you are to knock over the amazon <laughs> he didn't make the four plus three plus in the end just but just a base but again he's basing a dodger so i would almost consider not blitzing that one and blitzing a different one and using the dodge to dodge away of course, you'd look like an idiot if you're all a 1 in 36 on the dodge away, but it's all a trade-off, isn't it? So, I, I wouldn't have hated a blitz somewhere else. Maybe a blitz here, and then oh, come over here or something, but... That's obviously the more standard thing to do, is just to blitz the one mark in you, even if you've got a chili for and dodge, because you'd rather, you know, put your eggs in a 1 in 12, 9, 6 basket than a 1 in 36 basket, isn't it? That's the thing. The risk of rolling one in thirty six is brutal. Whereas the the blitz that oh he made a dodge anyway. <laughs> well and he just scores. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah. I, I, I would have liked to stall it out there, I think. I, I, I don't think he has a real sacking threat. Um, he certainly made no attempt to sack in the first half. So, given Amazon's four turns, although Amazon's are pretty slow, being everyone movement six, giving them four turns, and they've got five rerolls left, and they've got two fame, which shouldn't be ignored. The two fame could win them a, a, a key pitch invasion or a thrown rock. You know, they've still got 11 players, the Zons, despite having removed one. Hiles are down at 10, I, I think. You know, he, he only had three minutes. Uh, you know, and he was under pressure and everything. But I think maybe he should have tried to found, find a way to stall, um, you know, another at least another couple of turns. I think the Amazon 2 turn isn't very likely, especially in the rain. Um, I actually like the the Amazon decision to not take a throw or a catcher and use the fan factor instead because they've got two fame this game. It's it's not it's not unlikely. Is this is this bugged somehow that it's still up there? But um, it's not unlikely for them to get two fame with 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 four fan factor. So I think that's probably going to be more relevant than the occasional time you want to pass or the occasional time well pass with a thrower and the occasional time you want to catch with a catcher a lot of the times the person you want to be throwing with isn't the thrower and the person you want to be catching with isn't the catcher so um, the small utility you get from a thrower and catcher I think is outweighed by much more chance to have a fame of one not your opponent have a fame of one and sometimes have a fame of two. So yeah, I do like I do like the no throws and catches build. Absolutely. I don't like, however, the cage, the kind of you know LOS cage like this. Now he does have only four turns to score, so this is you know, and he's got two guard there, but. It does invite pressure on the front of the cage, and I, I don't like that because it's not always comfortable to deal with that, is it? So, yeah, I think. But the, I guess the. He could blitz one of the guards, couldn't he, with a mighty blow, and then jam in on the others. Instead, he goes for the defenseless scoring threat. Not keeping them based, though, her based. Which. Maybe don't like so much. Huge dodge out there. If that had, if that had been a fail, it would have been very bad. And so it's going to push hard down this side then. Pretty much got to push hard down one side when you when you Amazon's trying to get a quick score. I like having the wrestler here though, because it's uncomfortable to blitz the wrestler, isn't it? If you get them both down, you end up getting, you know, it's not it's not ideal. He's having to tag the mighty blow tackler with a defenseless player just to keep him out of a more a more relevant spot. But yeah, he's over the halfway line with two turns left, so. You know, the the, the Hyle's still got nine players. They should be able to mount a solid defense. I like this guy, given the, given the screen there. So he should be blitzed. Okay, he can just run around. But he could have maybe had to have been blitzed before he could make this 2D here. And maybe could have still blitzed him anyway, just to get because he needs to get people back to get in the way of a touchdown. So. so I think I would have probably blitzed him, and then used the one who blitzed to give the assist. And he wants to kind of pa go parallel, doesn't he? That's what I always find. If you kind of go mirror where they are, it it kind of makes makes their switch of side go too far back. Um. You know, so like if you, if you if you put your whole team here, it kind of gives them too much room to go around. So I like I like going. You know, I, I quite like that turn from the high elves there. I would have maybe kept this woman base though. 
And yeah, maybe, may, see, maybe there is a bit too much room to switch here. So that, that's always the problem you've got. Maybe there's one too many players in, in front and one too short over here. But you know, that, that's kind of very nitpicky, but it's the kind of thing that makes the difference between... And, and this not basing, it's the difference between being able to get forward and not being able to get forward, maybe, isn't it? Looking like GFIs to score, though. Three, six, two GFIs to score, and can't move laterally and score. So it's potentially a handoff in the rain, or double GFIs, and no lateral movement and touchdown. Well, he's managed to get in. Yeah, see, now this looks like an overcommit, doesn't it? But then on the other hand, if this one hadn't been there, maybe the Zons would have blitzed there and, and got in the corner. So it's hard, it's hard to call any of it wrong, really. But maybe a touch of an overcommit. But, but there you go, you know, if he doesn't overcommit, maybe the Zons just push down the side. So it's easy to be clever after the fact, isn't it? And I'm not trying to be that. I'm not trying to act like I'm the Mac Daddy of Blood Bowl that knows everything. Um, just, just, just casting the games and and you know saying what I think. Like that was a poor spot to stand because it's not adding anything, is it? It's still just a straight up dodge there. This one's better. But this guy isn't really doing a lot apart from protecting him, so maybe he should have GFI'd there first. So looking at it diagonally, he could potentially knock this one over and knock this one over, but they're both dodged, so it's unlikely. He's gone for the handoff. Oh my god, he's used the reroll. Wow. Wow. He's gone for the handoff anyway. <laughs> makes it. Wow. Yeah, maybe maybe he's could have double tanked over there. That was ballsy, wasn't it? Four plus. I mean, <laughs> you know, he couldn't really lose in a way because it would have still gone overtime if it had failed. But wow, what a play to win it. And uh, yeah, you know, like that again. That was that was pretty good. There's nothing you can really say was wrong. You know. Um, Maybe maybe different moves could have been made, and maybe the odd different bit of positioning could have been different. But there are there are pros and cons to every move, and uh, yeah, there, there were no crazy dice. Just just a, a good close game of blood ball that was that was probably won by the better coach at the end of the day. You know, he, the 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 high elf scored early, despite not really mustering much on defense in the first half, and they kind of played it safe and screened everything, but. They were never really threatening to turn over, were they, on defense? Because it's hard, because they're high elves. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, a valiant effort, actually, by Sam T with high elves. Give him credit for that. And props for Tis for winning. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.